He opens his eyes, and what does he see? Nothing, because the lights are out. It's the middle of the night. The time frame of the story might be slightly off, but when he turns on his flashlight, gold bond. For week 88, we have no material. So, let's talk about a powdery camp story. No takers? Oh well, gonna do it anyway. Have you- Please, no. <laughs> it's too late, I already started. Fine. Have, have, shh, listen, you're gonna miss the story. I'll watch the video. Oh, great, that'll work, okay. You, on the other hand, and you, have you ever shined a strong flashlight in the air through the smoke of a large bonfire inside of a cabin that's full of gold bond? You can have the same effect. Only instead of the beam being filled with smoke, it's filled with powder. How would I know this? Well, let's just say on the last night of senior high week of camp, this, you know, back in, what was that? That would have been... The last full week of July, I went out of the cabin for this and that, but never for long enough for Chunks or any other camper. Who knows why I would mention Chunks particularly. To get into any real mischief. Not enough time for him to really do anything. Then, one of the campers, probably, definitely Chunks, made a dash for the the last time I went out. I found this out afterwards, but there was, there was, you know, these are senior high kids. This was last week. Let them play around this a little bit here and there. We went to bed at a decent time eventually. Of course it was, just, you know, in case the camp director happens to see this video. But I had some gold bar. It was inside of a cabin. None of the campers were allowed to access because that was mine, of course. Chunks also had some. He's the only other one in the cabin that had some. At one point, though, one of the kids um, in a bed a bunk next to my bunk, he had some. I heard it fly through the air in the dark and then shine my flashlight and lo and behold, it's a beam of gold bar. It was like it filling the cabin. But before that happened, that last time where somebody, somebody, uh, made a dash to do something. So I thought I'd, we were finally all settled down. We were gonna go to bed. The alarm clock I had sat on a nightstand at the end of my bunk and the op at the foot end of my bunk. And so before I finished whatever, I laid down across the bed to set the alarm. And before I got up to finish getting ready for bed or whatever, I just laid my head down. I was kind of tired. And now, when I did this, I had pulled my covers back about halfway, laying across my bed, laying there for a second. I smell something that smells, seems like gold bun. And I knew they were playing around with it all, but I didn't, I thought we had already gotten it all cleared out. I didn't think there was any where I should be smelling it. So I lift my head up and I look down. There's none on my covers, which I'm on top of right there but then I smell it even stronger and I shine my light down the car part of the covers that I pulled back. It's all zigzagged up and down the whole length of my bed. So I find out later that Chunks had been trying to get somebody to do that each time I went out, but I came back too soon for anybody to have been brave enough to actually try it. And then finally, the last time I went out, he just made a dash for it, pulls my covers back, zigzags it all up and down, puts them back, gets in bed. And because Chunks is... You know, not exactly known to move around that much and, and uh, you know, move quickly, if not necessary. Hence the name Chunks. Maybe. It's a name his uncle came up with one day, I heard. But that could exact, that could be why, I don't know. But he, he would, I did not suspect he had actually done that. And so, of course, <clears throat> when it happened, when I stood up and took my flashlight on there and saw everyone was quiet because they knew that I, I had gotten them quiet down, so they weren't sure if I was okay with another joke. And so the one kid who's particularly mm, 
if there was a troublemaker, it could have been him. But he, I wouldn't say he was a troublemaker. But <clears throat> he was specifically watching, and I heard. And I, and, and I didn't want to smile. I didn't want to laugh. I wanted to keep it serious. I was enjoying this prank, but I didn't, I didn't want, you know, I didn't want to, to, to I, I wanted to have the advantage over it. And it wasn't working. So he saw me smiling. And so he announces, all right, he's smiling, guys. It's okay. And then they kind of all laugh. And I think it was, was it that week or that night or the night before? No, that story's lame. Anyway, so, so this week, from the lips of the starving comedian, we have a science tip. You can distinguish an alligator from a crocodile by paying attention to whether the animal sees you later or in a while. <laughs> See you soon, you big baboon.